frustrated with that turn of events in the race. Now, the person I'm frustrated with is myself. Welcome to Circuit Paul Ricard. We're here for the first round of GT World Challenge Europe's endurance season. First thing, Saturday morning. We did get here yesterday on Friday, but we just had a quick bronze test and some GT4 stuff. Nothing crazy, so figured we'd start off the vlog today on Saturday morning. We've got a two hour free practice coming up right now at nine o'clock. And then we've got pre-qualifying, which is like qualifying before qualifying at uh, three o'clock this afternoon. So looking forward to an awesome day here at Perth Circuit Paul Ricard with 55 or so GT3 cars in the pit lane. It's gonna be wild. So if you've never heard of GT World Challenge Europe and you're wondering what it is, uh, let's go to this pre-recorded segment with Mark, who's gonna tell you all about it. Hi everyone, before I explain this, I'm just gonna pop on this awesome camouflage Icon LD snapback hat, which you can get at lockdownbrand.com using my discount code on the screen below. You get 10% off, I get a small commission. It's win-win. But GT World Challenge Europe is a GT3 racing championship on the European continent. Now, all the cars are GT3. Like I said, they're all GT3 spec, but you got the BMW M4 GT3, the Ferrari 296 GT3, the McLaren 720S GT3, etc. There's an endurance championship and a sprint championship. I'm not gonna talk about the sprint today. I'll explain that when we get to the first sprint round of the season in a few weeks at Brands Hatch. So the endurance season is five races. The first of which is is the one I'm at right now, Paul Ricard, a three hour race. They then go to the 24 hours of Spa, which is kind of GT World Challenge's like, you know, marquee race event. They then do a three hour race at the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit, a three hour race at Monza and culminate the season in November at Jeddah in Saudi Arabia with a six hour race. And that's basically what GT World Challenge Europe is. Now you might've noticed GT World Challenge is all over the world. There's GT World Challenge America, GT World Challenge Asia, and GT World Challenge Australia, and it can get a bit confusing, but they're all GT3 racing championships. They're differently nuanced and have some different things about them that make them unique, but the overall thing that brings it together is they're all GT3. There's different classes within that based on driver rating. It can get a bit confusing. We won't get into that today. If you want a full breakdown of all of the nuances of GT World Challenge, let me know in the comments and I might do that in the future. But the most important thing to know is that you can watch GT World Challenge for free on YouTube on the GT World YouTube channel. So just go to GT World and you can watch GT World Challenge for free. And while you're there, um, go to this YouTube channel and also subscribe and like and leave comments and all that good stuff that future Mark is telling you to do. So let's get back to past Mark as he's about to head out and shoot free practice one. second level of the pit building here to shoot some pans from above down the front straightaway. It's one of my favorite types of shots to do. It's a really quick pan that just shows the speed of the cars, but it works really well as a nice transition shot. While I'm up here, I figure I'd talk a little bit about pit lane. So you notice I'm wearing my helmet and I'm also wearing a fireproof suit right now. It's actually not a bad day for it. It's about 15 degrees Celsius out right now. I don't know what that is in American. It's not bad to be wearing a fireproof suit. It's actually quite comfortable. But the reason for it is because pit lane can be a very dangerous area. There can be fires. You can get knocked over and hit your head. That's why we have to wear this important safety equipment. And it's just, it's not a safe area to be. It's somewhere where you want to get in, get your shots and get out. Especially in a championship as challenging as this one where there's 55 cars in the pit lane. They all are on similar fuel stints. So they'll come in basically all at the same time during the race. And when there's a red flag, you've got 55 cars going back in the pit lane, it can be very dangerous. If you do ever do get the opportunity to shoot in pit lane, just be super careful. Safety is number one. It's not worth risking your safety to get the shot that you want.
Media Shuttle and uh, made my way trackside here. I'm going to shoot for the last hour of this session out on track. Uh, it's a long session, two hours. I figured I'd split it. Hour in pit lane, hour trackside. Pretty happy with what I got in pit lane, so I'll just go trackside now, get some more car stuff. Paul Ricard turns one and two. It's one of my favorite places in this track to shoot. If they come real fast through one, then they go up over this slight rise here. There's not a lot of elevation at this track. They go over this slight rise, and some of them just clobber that curb, and it looks really nice. And as they exit turn two, they go right off onto the curb. It's just a beautiful tails away shot. You can frame really nicely right as they run along the curb. It's just really satisfying to watch in slow motion. just behind these tires right now and I'm doing one of my favorite techniques which is putting something in the foreground of the panning shot to help really show the sensation of speed. You can see on camera here the way that I frame it with the tires kind of in the bottom third of the frame. And I'll just pan the car and the tires moving quickly in the foreground really help create that sensation of speed especially when you're far away from the cars and they kind of might look slow to the human eye. But that really helps just that they're going quite quickly. It's not really super noticeable, but it does definitely help. And it's a technique that I use a lot. All right, well, I managed to hitch a ride back with some photographers that actually had a car pass so they could take their car on the access roads. Those are pretty rare, but they were able to get one. So I just jumped in their car with them because they were coming back to the paddock. I'm gonna hop over the bridge, go to the pit lane. WRT is going to come in shortly and do some live pit stop practice. And I've got some stuff in my brief that I need to get, so I'm hoping I can bang some of that out now if I make it in time for these pit stops. It's time to walk very quickly. <laughs> All right, future Mark here. I figured this was a little bit easier to explain in VO. You can see I'm getting the Insta360 cam ready here uh, with the invisible selfie stick, and I'm doing a 360 view of this pit stop. Now, this looks really cool a lot of the time, but I really don't enjoy doing this because I have to hold the stick above my head. I look like an idiot, and all my friends in the media center make fun of me and call me a gimbal guy. It's a running gag, and I kind of get in the way and kind of ruin their shots, but it does look really cool, so I'm glad I did it and it made for a really cool post on instagram after that we just went back to the media center got a bunch of editing done went and had some lunch at the amazing new wrt hospitality building and then it was basically time to get on with uh, the rest of the day and now i'm gonna uh, head back up get some things prepped for the next session it's gonna come up pretty quick i think we've got about an hour and a half till we have to be back in the pit lane for pre-qualifying so it's not free practice it's pre-qualifying it's a little bit different they call it pre-qualifying because if qualifying gets canceled, they would use the times from pre-qualifying. But essentially it is basically just another practice session. So we'll go and we'll do that. I'm thinking I'm gonna do the entire thing in pit lane because I have a few shots I definitely need to get in there and it's only an hour, so I don't think I'll have time to go trackside. So full session in the pit lane, it'll be editing from that and uh, hopefully get out of here. Not super late, but we'll be waiting for Drew. So it'll probably be super late. Pre-qualifying, James. How was your pre-qualifying? Uh, very hot, very fast. Beautiful weather here in the south of France. It is, but when you have to wear in this, bad boys, yeah. <laughs> isn't that great, isn't it? Yeah. No, mine was good. Got everything I needed to get, so I'm pretty happy. Okay. Uh, nice my ride. teams are close together in the pit lane. Yours are not. Mine was definitely not close <laughs> together. One in charge of the pit lane. 
Yeah. Don't worry, that karma will come back later in the year. You'll get to spawn, <laughs> your cars will be in the same pit lane. I wish. Be great. I'm praying you're ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm praying for that. <laughs> oh. We'll see you later, mate. All right, let's head back to the media center. Get some editing done. As I try to clobber my gimbal to open the door there. So I talked about this in an earlier video, but uh, where I grew up, not a lot of people really watch MotoGP or know a lot about it. Uh, in Canada, like, you know, MotoGP riders could walk down the street and no one would know who, we are, who they are. All the people that I'm about to pan to are all here just to see, to catch a glimpse of Valentino Rossi. And they've been lined up here all day just to catch a glimpse of him, maybe get an autograph, maybe get a photo. He, he is massively famous in the rest of the world. It's insane. I didn't realize how famous he was until I came to my first GC World Challenge race last year at Monzo. And just people queuing outside the garage for hours on end just to catch a glimpse of him. It's incredible. So the fans here are very passionate. They love their motorcycle riding and they love that, you know, Valentino Rossi might have retired from motorcycle racing, but now he's here racing cars. So it definitely bolsters, uh, you know, the number of spectators to have him here in this championship. So it's really cool. He's even got his own merch stand over there just selling VR46 merch. So. Awesome to have him here in the championship. Awesome that he's driving a BMW, so I get to be around him. He's a super nice guy. He's incredibly down to earth, despite how you know intensely famous he is. So, yeah, it's cool to have him here. Many hours later. Good night, Drew. Not even editing, just on his phone. Oh, okay. Long day. Oh, time for bed. More stairs. Night night, Michaeli. It was not any Michaeli, but it was all Unscripted. All right. The next day. Well, good morning from the lovely south of France. We're just uh, getting things together here, getting checked out of our lovely uh, hotel here. It's like this wonderful boutique hotel called the uh, Castle Saint Anne. It's amazing. I highly recommend staying here. And uh, yeah, head up to the racetrack, just up this incredibly steep hill. Apparently there's a cycling race this morning that's going by the track, so that might cause some traffic. So we're leaving a little bit earlier than we need to. We have breakfast over here in this wonderful little kitchen. And uh, we've actually packed up all of our stuff. And uh, Nick and I are gonna stay in an airport hotel uh, in Nice tonight. So we have a bit of a drive at uh, the end of the uh, day. So it's gonna be a late, late night, but is what it is. So off to the racetrack. Back to Circuit Paul Ricard's. Almost time for qualifying, but 15 minutes till the session starts. So we'll take you through qualifying here in GT World Challenge. It's a little bit different than qualifying in other racing. Here in GT World Challenge, you have three drivers in a car. Each one of them will do a 15 minute qualifying, and it's like a cumulative average lap time. So each driver is contributing to where the car starts, rather than most championships in sports cars will just have one of the drivers do the qualifying. Here, they all do it together. Just, you know, add their lap times up, average them off, and that's how they do it. And I really like that, because it actually gives us a lot of opportunity, you know, as videographers and photographers to get a lot of shots of the drivers, because you know each one is gonna be out in this session. There's a gap in between uh, each of the sessions. There's 15 minutes and like a seven minute gap, so you have time to get shots of each driver. It works really well. Gang's all here. Like I mean, like I mean. Yeah. No, that's it. I'm going. Everyone all right? 
fantastic, right? The country is so small, it has one BMW in the BMW Oman. Yeah, London's got like six. Exactly. All right, so that's qualifying done. I'm just going to go grab my gimbal that I stashed at Optimum. I did most of the session just handheld, just using the A7S3, the 24 to 70 Sigma, and just the Rode Video Micro. It's a really good microphone. It's really all you need for you know doing run and gun type stuff for social media so big fan of that microphone I haven't talked much about gear i'll give you a full rundown of my trackside rig that i'll be using uh, for the race but qualifying went well i uh, got pretty much everything i needed just an interview with the bmw guys there and now uh, grab my gimbal and head back do some editing grab some lunch and before you know it it'll be time for this three hour race so in terms of gear that we're going to use during the race, I've got the FX6, of course. Right now, I've actually got the Helios 44.2 on there because I'm going to use it on the grid. Uh, then I have the 100 to 400 in sling bag. And then we'll do the A7S3 with 24 to 70 on the gimbal, take that to the grid, and then I'll leave it with one of my teams, go trackside just with this, and then pick this up again for pit stops. But I do want to get a few gimbal shots on the grid. It's kind of annoying to carry the gimbal all the way to the grid, and then, you know, have to stash it and go get it later just for a few grid shots, but I think it's worth it. Uh, I've also already got my fireproof suit on, just the bottom half, I'll pull it up after, just because I don't want to have to come back here and change. Um, we are right above the pit lanes. So it only does take a couple of minutes to come back here and change. But those few minutes could mean all the difference uh, in the middle of a race when you're like rushing to get back here. If they come in a lap earlier, if I had to go change, I might then miss those pit stops. And there is only going to be two pit stops and I want to shoot both of them. So it's going to be hectic. After we leave the grid, we're going to be a lot of running around. Uh, we're going to constantly be moving. Not going to have much time to, uh, you know, look at my phone or uh, unless there's a safety car but uh, I might miss on doing some updates during the race so apologies in advance but uh, yeah it's been a busy day so far qualifying was good we had lunch all of that uh, and now we just you know have a few more minutes to chill before we go down to the grid and the craziness starts because these grids are always busy they're always wild but hey it's the first GT World Challenge Europe race of the season looking forward to it so let's get after it Oh, and my other one's right there. Excellent. Alrighty. Well, have fun today, mate. Thank you. See you later on, I'm sure. Oh. Fun one. Have fun today, mate. Yeah. Take care. Continue with Hold that for me. Just try not to embarrass myself. Thank you. Embarrass myself. Nick and I made the long walk down to turn one and got set up just before the cars enter turn one on the front stretch. It didn't really end up being what we wanted it to be though. It was really crowded and people weren't really interested in working together so everyone could get the shot. And it can be a sketchy area so I was keeping my eyes up track and I messed up my start shot. So it wasn't that great. I wasn't too happy with it, but let's pick it up with this. Update. All right, so first couple laps are down. Start shot wasn't really what I was hoping for way too crowded but is what it is uh, gonna do a few more laps here and there's a shuttle going by right now but i'll hop in the next one and uh head to the other side of the circuit but i need to be back in about 40 minutes to get ready for pit stops down to the 
bottom end of the circuit now. I got a couple shots of another safety car, unfortunately. Uh, I'm just waiting for the shuttle to come back around. Uh, pro tip, I went and walked in front of where all of these photographers are, so hopefully the shuttle won't be full by the time I go to get in. It's just one of those games you gotta play, go in front of everyone else so the shuttle stops where you are to make sure you get a seat on the shuttle. It's gonna be tight to make it back to the pits in time about 15 minutes, but walking I'll never make it. So hopefully the shuttle can get me back there in time. So you know how I've been letting you know several times that I've been foreshadowing for something that's going to happen later? Well, this is where it happens. And if you remember what I said earlier about only wearing half of the driver's suit, like tying it around my waist and then just putting it on later. Fireproof suit on just the bottom half, I'll pull it up after. Well, that meant that when a full course yellow came out and I needed to run back to the pits to make the pit stop, I had to stop, take off my sling bag, take off my GoPro, take off my hat, zip the suit up and put all of those things back on before I could run into the pit lane. And it took me, you know, about a minute to do that. And because of that, I got to the pit stop I wanted to shoot slightly too late. I was able to get the second half of it and it all kind of worked out. But uh, yeah, you'll see in this uh, crazy sequence of me running through the pit lane and then uh, I give a bit of a debrief afterwards. frustrated with that turn of events in the race. Now, the person I'm frustrated with is myself. Um, I decided not to completely wear my fire suit. I decided to wear half because it was, I was gonna be too hot wearing the whole thing. Well, then when I needed to rush back to the pit lane, I had to stop, take my sling off, take my, my tabard off and all of that, and then put the suit back on, zip it up and then put everything back on. And had I just worn the suit and not had to do that, I would have made it back in time for that entire pit stop and not just shot half of it, like what ended up happening. So I'm a little bit disappointed in myself. So lesson learned from now on, we just wear the suit the whole time. I've got two cars already retired from the race. There's been about three safety cars and a couple of FCYs. So it's been a little bit difficult. FCY means full course yellow, by the way. And I'm feeling like I'm a little bit behind on car stuff. So a little disappointed with that as well. But hey, we're gonna bounce back. It's gonna be fine. Everything's good. Still beats sitting in an office. So give me a thumbs up down there to help me get my mojo back. Because I feel a bit down right now. So I've walked uh, out the pit in here, around a driver's right on the circuit, just waiting for them to come back around. Uh, this is when knowing the regulations of the racing is important and knowing the rules. I know that I have more time here because the cars can only make one more pit stop and the maximum stint time is one hour and three minutes. So they cannot pit until at the minimum 4.57 p.m. So I know that I have until 4.57 p.m. to be back at the box to shoot the pit stops. Okay, quick pit stop in the media center. Switched over to vertical mode and get ready to go up for this final round of pit stops. Let's hope it goes better than the last round of pit stops. I have faith. Please have faith.
This probably looks incredibly stressful and incredibly hectic, especially the sequence from earlier, but to be honest with you, I absolutely love this. I love that I push myself when a lot of other people would just say, ah, I won't make it in time. Nah, I'm gonna sprint and I'm gonna get there and get the shot. It'll be worth it. suit and helmet on because I might need to run across the pit lane to shoot them celebrating on a wall. Hopefully they celebrate on the wall. It's way more interesting than uh, just standing and doing it in the crush. So we are going up to the pit wall now. I'm hoping this will be good. It'll be good. I have faith. Again, I'm saying the same as what I said last time. But I have faith. Will they come to the wall, Gary? You think they'll come to the wall? You can always run back in if they don't, so... Yeah. It went very well. Got the celebration I wanted. Got the cars in Park Ferme. And got the team at the end. So it went quite well. I'm happy with that. I had faith it all worked out. Podium complete, went quite well. I love how they do the podiums here in GT World Challenge. They just get up there, take a photo with the Pirelli hat on, and then they do the champagne. It only takes a couple of minutes. Some of the other championships I work in, I see the ones in the US, they have to wear six different hats first, and the podium takes 100 years. Um, here, it literally takes two minutes. So I only had to do a pro class. So I'm already finished up, and we'll head back to the media center. I have to shoot a couple of interviews with the winning drivers, and then uh, do a bit of editing, of course, or a lot of editing uh, into the evening, and then we got to get out of here and start heading towards uh, the airport for tomorrow morning's flight. We're stopping about halfway in Cam to uh, sleep for the night, and then off to the airport home tomorrow. to my hotel just outside Can or Cannes as I've heard Americans call it. I think it's Can though. And uh, yeah, we're staying here for the night. In fact, we're gonna leave in about seven and a half hours. Uh, but hey, no, six and, six and a half hours. Yeah, we're gonna leave soon. <laughs> I'm gonna get some sleep. I'm very sweaty, disgusting. I need a shower and to get in this bed and get a good night's rest and uh, we'll debrief hopefully at the airport tomorrow or at my house because I always say we're going to debrief at the airport and then I forget and I just do it in my office but yeah uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Well wasn't that a good guess. I totally forgot to film a recap at the airport. I actually didn't forget to film one. I was sitting in the Air France lounge in like Paris and I was like oh I can film this recap but like I, I don't like filming when I'm at the airport. It feels really weird. There's like people around and stuff and I'll just do it when I get home. So all in all, it was a really enjoyable event uh, at Paul Ricard. Obviously, like you got to see the ups and downs of a weekend. Like I, there was a point where I was pretty down and pretty upset with just the decisions that I made during the race and how I was gonna shoot things. And it just, it just didn't work out. You know, I, I should have worn my suit completely, not worn it halfway. Um, that just really wasn't good and it was a, it was a, it was a rough decision to make and, and pretty frustrating but hey we got through it all the content got made and everyone was happy so that's really what matters like I was down on myself in the moment but we bounced back and that's what's important but the most important thing about the weekend is really nothing went like egregiously wrong there were no big blow-ups there was no arguments there was no issues with you know the the racetrack or issues with 
you know, the media delegates or anything like that. There was no drama. Everything went perfectly fine. SRO, who run GT World Challenge, were super helpful with everything. The track was super helpful. The media shuttles ran pretty well. So it was pretty fantastic. We had a pretty good time. Uh, we had a little bit of a drama with our hotel on Sunday morning where we thought we were staying until Monday and found out that uh, the wrong dates were confirmed. Uh, so we ended up having to leave <laughs> and get a hotel near the airport Sunday night, which led to um, <clears throat> being very tired on the uh, the travel home but it is what it is those are little things that you bounce back from and you know you try not to get too worked up about them because you know in the grand scheme of things it's it's not a big deal we figured it out we booked another hotel room and we were ready to go so uh yeah i just really want to end off just by saying you know again like it's pretty amazing to get to do this first european round of the year it, it was awesome it was good friends i want to thank nick dungan for uh, you know, getting the hire card and, and meeting me at the Nice Airport, you know, Michaeli and Drew and Emma and everyone for just being great company. We had an awesome time, and uh, yeah, and again, just really honored and and fortunate I get to do this for a living. You know, I do love doing this. It is an absolute grind and it is so much work, but I absolutely love doing this for a living, and I can't imagine doing anything else. So, thanks to everyone for being a subscriber, for liking, commenting, for following my journey. It means a lot. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see in the future. If there's any little segments I can include or things you want to know about, um, please let me know if you liked my recent editing breakdown video. I'm debating doing more of those. So please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of those. And yeah, I guess for now, we'll just sign off and uh, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>